Hi, good afternoon, China. Good afternoon, Sir Fred. Um, thank you so much for saying yes to us. Um, good afternoon, guys. Here we are again to another touch base um, episode. So uh, here with me is uh, the president and uh, CEO of uh, RLC, Mr. Frederick Digo. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, China. Good afternoon to all the uh, followers of my trade. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. So, sir, this is actually our uh, new way of ed educating people in the fundamental aspect of um, of a certain stock. Just like any other, diba, we they tend to know what the company is, but it's it's so good to heard uh, to hear them from the brand face itself. So that's why we are uh, trying to interview the owners. Para beyond the be behind the the stock, oh, there is a face. So, ngayon, sir, pag dinanig din nila RLC. Yung face mo na yung maaalala nila. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> it's good, of course. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> sir, while I pull this up, um, can, sir, can you tell us a bit of background? Uh, your um, your typical day in the office, like uh, in a in a regular day before the pandemic. Can you tell us how do you how do you spend your day? Before the pandemic, uh, well, I guess almost 100% of all the meetings are face-to-face, -face, no? as they say today. Uh, I probably have about eight eight face-to-face -face meetings a day. And in between all those meetings, uh, I sign uh, a lot of papers. A lot of checks, a lot of documents, a lot of purchase orders, a lot of contracts. Uh, and then in between also, I, I try to reply, read and reply to, I don't know, a few hundred messages on my phone, on WhatsApp or Viber, as well as on email, uh, both internal and external communications. Uh, and of course, you try to field uh, several phone calls within those uh, working hours as well. So it's it's just like I think like any other typical uh, executive who who's quite busy. I can imagine, sir. So hundreds of uh, documents. <laughs> Para ka nag workout no? <laughs> You lift your arms over several times. It's a finger workout. <laughs> so we will go to the par first part of our interview. This is getting to know RLC. So our first question is, where did you start your successful career in RLC? Uh, I, my first job in RLC was called Corporate Project Development Manager. Uh, what that meant was I was to look for projects. So, my very first uh, task was to buy land, no? to look for land. And the very first piece of land I bought was in Bacolod City, which eventually uh, became Robinson's Place Bacolod. So, that's actually the first mall that I built. Uh, that was way back in 1993. And we constructed it over 1994 and 1995. So we opened in December of 1995, uh, Robinson's Place, Bacolod. So that was my first my first job, to look for new projects uh, that RLC could embark on. Oh, not, sir, you're building, uh, you're constructing a building at 10 years old? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your your flattery will get you everywhere. Uh, but I was twenty, I was twenty two years old uh, when I started in RLC. Oh, that's very nice, sir. I mean, that was really young still. Uh, sir, uh, next question is: Do you see your success story as a ladder or as a web? Like, is I it think... a straight to us industry, or you went to other industries? I think it has to be a combination of both. Um, I actually started out in the media industry, 
the Gokongway Group at one point owned the Manila Times. So that's where I actually I started. No? So I started working at the Manila Times when I was uh, 19. So I actually moved to Robinson's Land after three years. So it, it has to be a combination of a ladder or a web, as you as you say, uh, because we both grow the existing business as well as build new businesses, not totally new businesses. So. In the case of RLC, for example, we started out as a shopping center developer. We branched out into office buildings, residential condominiums, hotels, resorts. Uh, now we have industrial facilities, industrial warehouses, destination estates, uh, low-cost housing, uh, and and almost every facet of the property industry we are into it now. And uh, all of those were built uh, from scratch, uh, piece by piece, brick by brick, into what we are today. So uh, today we we have we're organized into five different business units. No? The five that I just mentioned earlier, or actually six six business units. That's nice, sir. Um, in in terms of uh, I I see it's like when you build a business is it like for you just like building it's like uh, building a lego another project like is it like that for you when you build something uh a new one a, a new business is that how you see it how you how you feel doing it uh china i think uh to build something i guess just to use your words no? uh, on a ladder basis is so much easier i think because you keep building on what you already have and you just keep I guess growing it bigger and bigger no? but building new businesses take a lot of uh, it takes a lot of time a lot of effort a lot of passion it's like it's like creating a you know when you build something from scratch you you almost don't know the industry you have to learn it uh, from scratch so if you're not passionate about it you don't want to put in the time the effort and the money into it it's not going to happen and it's not going to happen successfully so uh, i think it's far more complicated than uh, putting lego blocks i think probably the lego block analogy is more uh, more bagay sa ladder type of development if if i understood your ladder or web question yeah. correctly so i think when you when you build new businesses, I think you have to pick up a whole new board game and start from scratch. I agree, sir. Sir, um, next is how did you, how did the pandemic affect RLC as a whole, it, and uh, how did you go about it? Yeah, it's it's really affected us uh, quite significantly. You know, a lot of our businesses are really affected by this pandemic. Our shopping malls, for one, uh, had to be closed to the public. Uh, in in the early parts of the pandemic and then after that as the quarantine levels were reduced our malls also gradually reopened to the public now we started with essential services only which are defined by supermarkets pharmacies and banks and then as the quarantine levels were reduced then we started opening for takeout only uh, before uh, we started allowing uh, dine in with social distancing and things like that no so the shopping mall business for example is, is greatly affected by this pandemic our hotels business is another business that's uh, greatly affected by this as you know the a lot of borders were closed or have restrictions no? so a lot of the uh, tourism or business travel was cut back so the hotels are are greatly affected by this because hotels are short-term stays relying heavily on business travel and uh, tourist travel no? so it's also greatly affected so our businesses are are very much affected by by this pandemic uh, however the uh, the mixed use nature of our business allows some of our businesses however to to do okay during this pandemic, such as our office buildings business, 
primarily because uh, we are catering to the BPO industry and the BPO industry has been labeled an essential business. So BPOs are allowed to continue their operation, no? uh, even at the highest quarantine level. So our office buildings business is doing okay. Uh, our logistics or industrial warehouse businesses are also doing okay since most of the tenants of our industrial businesses would be food companies and food companies are also labeled as essential businesses they continue to to operate no? so we have some businesses that continue to do i, I don't want to say well but uh, they're doing okay i think during this pandemic almost nobody is doing well really <laughs> Everybody's just doing okay or not so okay. Uh, so some of our businesses greatly affected, some of our businesses doing okay. Given that what you have said, uh, what are the adjustments? Because I can imagine how greatly affected tourism was and, it's a, and hotel industry is really a big part of it. And uh, as far as I know, for BPOs, naman, even though they allowed people to go and remote, uh, uh, work remote, uh, their servers are still in the office and their IT people are still in the office. So it, the office should keep on running as is. Uh, what are the adjustments that you... Uh, that you made uh, during those times to keep the business running and as you mentioned yeah it's not uh, it's it some of the the businesses that you had uh, did good even though in the highest peak of the pandemic um, maybe I'll just give you an example of one of our businesses that had to respond to the, to the situation of the times no? uh, let's talk about say for example our shopping center business <clears throat> so our shopping center business introduced uh, several innovations to try to cope with this uh, with this pandemic or the situation where uh, travel is restricted or people have a fear of of going to public places. So, for example, we created a program called the Personal Shopper within our Robinson Smalls business unit. So you can there's a number you can call and Viber. If you would like a personal shopper within Robinson's Galleria, for example, or Robinson's Manila or Robinson's Magnolia. And I encourage you to try it because it's very easy to use. It's very convenient. I, I tried it out myself. You just Viber the person. You, you tell them what you would like to buy, uh, which store you would like to buy in within the mall. And the personal shopper will go to the store for you, pick up the item for you and facilitate the payment for you. No. So you can pay electronically and then the personal shopper will pick up the item from the store and then get your permission to send it to you via any of the transport apps like Grab or Lala Move or anybody like that. They'll just find a transport provider, send the goods to you. So it's seamless. You just talk to somebody on Viber and uh, you can buy the item and it can get delivered to you within, within an hour or less. If you live near Galleria or Manila or Magnolia, for example, it, it should be in your house within 30 minutes. So it's a very seamless and a very good uh, program that we created uh, within Robinson's Malls. Um, and for those someone who would like to still come to the mall and pick up the, the items they bought, we have designated pickup stations within our malls. Uh, so you, you can talk directly to the store or the outlet that you're talking to or the restaurant. Uh, arrange your own payment with them, arrange your order with them, and they'll meet you at the pickup station. So you don't have to come down of your car, you don't have to park, you don't have to walk to the store. You can just very conveniently pick it up at the at the uh, at the station. pickup station. We also have a Robinson's delivery or an art delivery app that you could also that you could also avail of. Uh, it, it's it's basically one service less than the personal shopper uh, and the fourth program we're trying to create is an e-commerce platform for robinson smalls we're calling it mall dash uh, so we have uh, piloted a site now for mall dash uh, where people can electronically this time order through the website now no of mall dash you can order uh, food from several establishments in a shopping mall and uh, the idea here is to serve you as fast as possible no? and you you know you're dealing with robinson's malls 
so it's credible it's reliable and you know you're gonna get the proper service uh at the at the quickest time possible so for our malls uh, for example we have our delivery the pickup station the personal shopper and mall dash so these are some of the innovative ways that we have come up with to adjust to to the situation not to this to this global pandemic yeah so that's i, I hope that example is uh, good that's really nice because i think you also help the tenants there in the mall so if they if they have uh, a place there in the Robinson Mall, it's gonna help them also create sales at the same time. So I think yeah. it's really good. Yeah, actually you're absolutely right, China. As far as we're concerned, we have two customers here. No, the first customer would be the tenants of the malls. They are our customers, and then the general public, the general consumers who who come to our malls to shop or to eat, are also our customers. So we have two sets of customers uh, in our mall business. Our locators and the and the shoppers. This is really good uh, because, guys, you will see how how people in the management side build their um, concern, uh, both in the customers side and also that one, the other one, this other stakeholder that they considered as customer also, which are the tenants that you know that is greatly affected with the less foot traffic happening because of the pandemic so we'll go on to the next question uh sir do you think that our current situation is temporary you know the well i think we have to hope for the best no uh well i think like most other businesses we are hoping that the vaccination of uh the majority of the population will lead to herd immunity which will lead to a normalization of of uh, daily behavior no uh, the resumption of the normal consumer behavior and the normal daily behavior of uh, of the citizenry. So I'm very hopeful that that it will get better. Uh, and of course, we are all hoping that the sooner, the better. Yeah, I agree, sir. Uh, okay, next is, are you waiting for the economy to go back to pre-pandemic level? Or are you moving on fully to embrace the new ideas, which I know you already have cited some of the projects that you have. Uh, but the, however, the processes uh, the, to survive and thrive in the norm in, in the uh, normal for long term is it something that you are focused on now, or are you still thinking that sh it should be balanced, the one for the traditional or the sure. mortar, the brick and mortar? Uh, are you still gonna uh, are still gonna have projects moving forward in that kind or the traditional side or are you moving towards fully online and the virtual side of development no i think i think definitely uh being a real estate company we're very much we're as brick and mortar as it gets uh in real estate we have to build things and i think uh i think i really think that this uh this pandemic cannot last uh forever no um things have to get better at some point uh however clearly the the process of digitalization of our behavior and the economy is has always been there what this pandemic did is hasten or uh, forced us to speed up the digitalization process we were always headed towards digitalization Na, na madali lang because of this pandemic no so i think that uh, nothing has really changed as far as my long term view has is concerned uh, we were always headed towards digitalization of processes digitalization of some parts of the economy and we will keep doing that you know, like the mall dash uh, website the mall dash app that's an example of the digitalization uh, initiatives that we are taking no but what this pandemic has clearly done was if before we, we could roll out Moldash in five years, now we have to roll it out in six months. Uh, we have to do it we have to do it faster and uh, crisper and make sure that that we are very much in touch with the consumers' needs and wants. No? So I think to answer your question, we will continue to build shopping centers, we will continue to build office buildings and we have to continue to build homes, no? 
I think just because of the pandemic doesn't mean people don't have don't need places to live. So we're in the business of building and selling homes. Uh, we're in the business of you know building people's dreams. So we have to keep doing that. We we will not stop from from building uh, estates and from building homes and from building facilities that people need and want. Thank you, sir. Um, how about um, I? I wonder what are RLC's company uh, values and um, or value that are very part- that you are very particular with uh, that should be exercised from the executive team to the staff. We had to choose one. Uh, we call it customer obsession. Uh, we're taking it one level higher than customer centricity. Uh, at the end of the day, we exist because of our customers. No, if we don't serve our customers, uh, uh, our customers' needs and wants, then there's really no reason for us to exist. Um, if you have no customers, we have no business. If you have no business, we shouldn't exist. The, I think you have already answered the question of why is it important to you, and uh, and I definitely agree because we are also in the in the business of service and um i totally agree with you sir uh how do you prioritize um things like disaster recovery plan or business continuity plan because this is something that you know at the onset it can look like a cost for a company but uh, but it's not needed as of the moment but when things turn you know sour it's going to be the first thing that you have to to uh, revive or turn on so how do you prioritize this thing sir even though this uh, pandemic thing is still far from reality maybe china I'll answer you this way no <clears throat> uh, about uh, three years ago we created a sustainability team within the company and uh, two years ago we published our first uh, sustainability report you know uh, a really thick full report and we engaged uh, expert consultants to assist us in in crafting our sustainability programs no uh, which we identified one by one we outlined one by one and we spelled out one by one and all of that uh, resulted into that uh, our first ever sustainability report so i think the company takes sustainability seriously uh so things like disaster recovery to your question are are covered by all of that no? so we look at the sustainability of the business sustainability of our programs etc uh, etc et so it's, it's a full it's a full program um how do you make sure that uh, you're in terms of keeping the business also you are also keeping the uh, the welfare or managing uh, employees welfare i think during these pandemic times now there's a lot of things that we have done to 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 assist our people no? uh first of all we especially during difficult times or uh, high quarantine levels we allow uh, a majority of our people to work from home uh so we try to equip as many as possible or as many as qualified employees possible with the tools to allow them to work from home be it uh, laptops or devices or smartphones and the things i got uh, we try to equip uh, all the all the concerned uh, people no, with with the tools to to work from home the second is we also uh, we have subscribed to a lot of programs like Microsoft Teams, Zoom, to allow people to meet electronically. So a lot of people don't have to meet face to face now. Uh, personally, I I only meet face to face maybe now, 10 or 15 percent of the time. No? So 85, 90 percent of the time I'm meeting on Teams or Zoom. Uh, third, we we also subscribe to a digital uh, signing app. No. So I think right now we're using Adobe. I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's called Adobe Sign. Okay. So that uh, I think in the last six months we processed over eleven thousand eleven thousand uh, documents via electronic signing. So 
So subscribing to this uh, electronic uh, signing has, has really eased the life of of our employees, no? of our people. And uh, we also do a lot of uh, PDF signing electronically online. So, so these three programs, I think, have really helped our people cope with the situation and uh, made their life more secure or make them feel more more secure and uh, cared for. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, especially at the height of the pandemic, we, we had to institute a lot of programs to help our employees like take care of uh, some of our very critical employees, you know, especially those who are very critical to the business continuity. When they couldn't travel, when uh, public transportation was cut, we had to give them temporary shelter. We had to take care of their nutritional needs. Uh, you know, things like that. Uh, of course, as a, as a large responsible corporation, we had to take care of, of those things. And even after the quarantine restrictions were, were lowered, we also tried to help our employees get to and from work safely, uh, such as uh, we, we, we engaged our own bus companies to have pick up designated pickup points to pick up our employees from the north, south, east, west, etc., wow. and bring them to work uh, in a in our own, shall we say, uh, corporate transportation, no? so that they feel again safer and more secure to come to and from work. That's very nice to hear, sir. We know that uh, you know in terms of uh, knowing the. Knowing that as your practice, I think uh, people will have more confidence in RLC because at the end of the day, if you know this, if your people will have a problem, it's going to be if your business is going to be affected in the end. Yeah, um, making sure that their welfare is good is also making sure that the business continue, uh, whatever, whatever happens.